Hello, I'm Jeff Webb, and today we're going to talk about another shot from my latest personal project, Memory of a Stolen Car. This is the speedometer shot, or the odometer shot. I completed the 1985 Buick LeSabre model, and this was the interior, as well as the dashboard and the different gauges. I sent a version of the edit to get critical feedback from a few people. I've been so focused on all the different aspects of this video that I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Some of the critical feedback that I received was that I should make the numbers move in the odometer. So you see for my final shot, the numbers are moving very, very slightly. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to achieve that, but I knew that it would add a level of depth to this. So this is the final shot that made it into the project. I thought I might be able to accomplish that in Cinema 4D and After Effects, but I had already created this after taking a school motion course, Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed. I made this and just used it as a placeholder in my edit. And I'll show you that once again. This was the piece. So it was kind of shocking that I got to this point overall. I didn't think I'd be able to 3D model all of these items, but I did. And once I got here, I figured this would be a good challenge. I started doing research. The more I looked into how odometers work, they're pretty complicated. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing anything too complicated in Cinema 4D to get this across the finish line. I found a tutorial by Aron Rabinowitz on creativecow.net. This looks like it was ported over from creativecow.net and placed on Vimeo. I'll leave a link to this, but this was very detailed in three parts about how to create an odometer. I knew that I might have to make it a bit more customized because the amount of miles on the car were going to be pretty detailed and that got me started. So I did a lot of research generally about the pieces of the car when I was modeling. These are a couple key pieces from my reference. Some of the 1985 cars have the trip odometer, but in the car that I had, it did have the trip and this is how you would reset it. So I wanted to make sure that it was pretty accurate. As I got into After Effects and just simply laid out the numbers, all of the numbers weren't matching up as far as the font and typefaces. I realized that I should certainly make it in After Effects and then port it over to Cinema 4D and Octane and wrap it around an object. So these are all of the numbers that I had. It's basically going from zero to 100,000 miles. And when it gets to 100,000 miles, it turns all the way over. And I put this composition into a larger composition, which basically allowed me to hide everything. And I approximated if the car was going from 45 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour, then I could get a pretty good estimate of what that odometer might look like. If I zoom out, I basically go from 85,205 miles to 85,260 miles. This set of numbers and going approximately 55 miles, I was able to calculate it and make it look as accurate as possible within 30 frames. I'm not great at math, but I ended up figuring that out. So I had a massive timeline, but I had the 30 frames that I needed. The numbers weren't moving terribly fast, but everything basically looked the way that I wanted. I exported this out as a PNG sequence with alpha, and I brought that into Cinema 4D and Octane. So let's jump over there now. And here we are in Cinema 4D and Octane. I have my camera for my gauges. I'm going to turn that off and you'll basically see that we are outside of the car in the environment and I really wanted to have the environment still pass by and I turned off some of the elements that weren't going to be needed in the render. So apparently this is a flying car or the wheels are turned off because the geometry was pretty heavy and it didn't need to be rendered. So if I jump back into my camera, we're inside the car. I'll just solo the odometers. If I type in the beginning of odometer, I'm going to solo. So you can see if I just jump frame to frame, you can see that the numbers are rolling. And I accomplished this by making a cylinder and then adding in R19 and in version 4.05 R7, I have a black glossy material. 
So this is kind of an older material from what you might see in the current version, but I have the black glossy material there. And then I added this odometer miles, which is an image texture, and that is an animation. So again, I rendered out an animation that was about 30 frames, and I tried to wrap it around this cylindrical object. I had two of the objects. One of them was for the total miles on the car, and one of them was for a trip. You could press this and it would reset the trip. So I made those elements as well. So in Cinema 4D, you can see if I double click on this material, go to basic and then go to my node editor. If I go to basic, I only have diffuse and opacity turned on. If I go to diffuse, you can see there's an image texture and this image texture ends up being a sequence of PNGs. The PNG sequence is then being used in the opacity as well. If I go to opacity, I have wrap around normal and auto texture, and I'm using a UV transform and I'm using a projection to make sure that it wraps around correctly. And I'll just click through here and I have it turned to negative 90. But basically that's what I did for getting the result you see here. If I just hit G, I'm going to go through and you can see that this is the fastest moving part, but essentially those numbers are moving. I have a PNG sequence that goes from zero to 30. So if I go to my animation tab, that's what I've imported and the mode is simple timing range range start is zero range end is 30 zero loops movie start frame is zero which also corresponds with my png sequence movie end frame is the same with the 30 frames of the png sequence and my cinema 4d project is set to 24 frames per second as well as my after effects project which is also set to 24 frames per second in this shot just like the rest of the piece i also wanted to come up here and show you that I have UVW mapping on both sides, mixed textures, tile, seamless. Those are the settings that I had here as well. So in my gauges, I have a disc object and I applied my illustrator texture to it. And the disc object has a cloth surface applied to it. And that was placed within a bool and that was placed within a bevel. And I wanted to remove these portions of the disc using a bool, and then the cloth surface would add thickness to it, and then I could bevel it here. I wanted it to appear to have depth. I didn't push the bevel as much as I could have, but I think it sells the effect. And once I got it back into After Effects, I had a similar workflow to what I did in my other breakdown. I have a lens flare here that kind of flickers to emulate some sort of sunlight. And then I have my Lumetri and I have a dark vignette to focus your eyes and sort of make this the focal point inside this speedometer pre-comp. I just have all my different layers laid out. I only have a few layers that have Lumetri on top or any color correction. If I turn that off, you can see what I've done there. And these have a different blending mode for adding on top of what was essentially just the beauty pass or the denoise main. It had a little bit of noise in it, so I cleaned that up using denoiser or denoiser three. But this is where I ended up and I was really pleased with the shot and I was pleased that someone gave me critical feedback. It was difficult for me to find a tutorial about how to accomplish a mechanical odometer inside of Cinema 4D and that's how I accomplished that shot using Illustrator, After Effects, Cinema 4D, and Octane Render. Thank you. Goodbye.